Hello everyone, Robert here. It is another beautiful day in Southern Ontario. So this, as you probably know, if you're a beekeeper, is a queen excluder. Uh, they come in steel, they come in plastic, although I've been told uh, the, the plastic ones are not very good. They have a tendency to tear up um, the forager's wings prematurely, but that aside, they come in steel, they come in plastic, and the idea, you place them on top of the brood chamber, and the width of the, uh, the width of the gaps are enough that the foragers are able to squeeze through, but the queen bee cannot squeeze through. Those tight little gaps, they keep the honey uh, unadulterated by brood. A lot easier to manage your hive if you have your honey uh, above your brood box and you have your queen always down below in the brood chamber. Now like anything else under the sun, uh, there's people who love them and there are people who hate them. Uh, the people who hate them will say that you might as well call them honey excluders. Uh, the, the bees don't really like them and I've seen that myself. Uh, a lot of the times unless you have a really strong nectar flow on, uh, the worker bees will not like going through. Uh, so that is uh, true to what I, I've experienced as well. I think it's completely understandable why the bees wouldn't want to go through the queen excluder. Uh, imagine every time you wanted to go through a door, you could only open the door about as wide as your waist. You come through, you know, trying to trying to squeeze through, you know, that would that would kind of suck, wouldn't it? So a couple of years ago, um, there was a another Southern Ontario beekeeper, um, uh, Eugene Roman at uh, Rosewood Estates Winery and uh, and Meadery, I believe. Uh, so he suggested uh, to a whole bunch of people, uh, you know, forget about putting your queen excluder on the traditional way put them on perpendicular to the hive. So I have an example of this. So this is your traditional queen excluder. It's on top of a single brood, uh, a June nuke. It's doing quite well. And um, these bees are working it. So what Eugene found uh, over several decades of beekeeping is putting your queen excluders on perpendicular this way uh, and leaving a gap at the back and a gap at the front for the bees to pass through easily uh, is actually a uh, perfect means. The queen will not rise above that queen excluder, but the bees are able to easily pass through at the back or at the front. So in a way, for the uh, the queen excluder naysayers, uh, it's a way to have your cake and eat it too. No smoke required today. Uh, these bees are just too busy packing that nectar in. So I put this on a, about a day and a half ago and uh, they're working it. They are filling that up with nectar. So we'll see how these guys progress. Head back in there. So uh, I was thinking earlier this year, uh, if you do not need the queen excluder installed the traditional way to function as a queen excluder, right? So this is our traditional way. This is the way that uh, Eugene prescribes. If this works, then why don't I save the, you know, 22 bucks or whatever the queen excluder and see if some scrap gutter coil placed right over top of the brew box will function uh, in the same way. So this is my uh, experimental hive here. Again, I uh, got a configuration single brood, double brood, uh, makeshift queen excluder, and then I got three medium deep boxes. Uh, moving up in the world, I got a dollar Emma tripod here. It's gonna go to wide angle. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good about today so I'm gonna see, uh, see about going with no smoke uh, but let's crack open this and I'm gonna see how they're doing with uh, put the last box on last week 
how are you guys doing today? Are you gonna be nice without smoke or do I need to go? Oh! Maybe I better go get smoke. I saw at the beast supplier, uh, they've got these, uh, these little smoker fuel pellets I had. My goodness, who's paying for smoker fuel? Someone, I guess. You know, I think the best smoker fuel is just whatever scrap you have. You know, wood shavings are great. Pine, if you have hardwood, it's even better. But paper and pine shavings, uh, all you really need. Let there be smoke. Am I recording? I am recording. Okay, guys. This might help you to behave. Now, the top brood box, uh, you know, they're getting it capped off. I wouldn't pull that yet. There's still, uh, still some nectar in there. So I'll let them finish that off. Take this one off. Put it, lay it aside. Let's see what we have underneath. Huh. Looks like they're filling things out. A lot of nectar. No brood, no eggs. We're not ready yet. Needs more time. It's coming along though. No sign of brood. That is good. got nine frames in this because I'm going to be cutting this as comb honey. Beautiful. Perfect comb honey. Uh, this again, I'll be cutting this for cut comb. That is beautiful. Perfect cut comb. Mark the top there, W wax I just do a strip of wax let them build that is looking very good as well so the verdict is um, here I'll pull this off here look at that beautiful cut comb honey it will be I gotta get those off. People like lighter cut comb honey. Not that it really makes a difference. So I'll try to take, give you a little look in the hive here. So that's my queen excluder. Just a piece of gutter coil. And uh, I mean, not much more you can ask. That's perfect. That will be cut comb honey right there uh, so a bit of an explanation I think so the reason a scrap piece of metal works is if you look at um, you know 95 percent of hives the brood nest is like there it's like the you know a bit bigger than the football a basketball but it's an oval shape and it generally takes up uh, you know the center you know if you're talking nine you know nine frames or ten frames it's going to take up about eight frames and typically the queen will stop at the edges you know some hives will fill up that edge some hives will fill up that edge but the point is the queen wants to have fluid fluidity of movement the queen wants to be able to move freely and so all you need to do is stop 
the movement of the queen over the brood nest. You know, is it possible the queen will get through and start laying? It's possible. But, uh, you know, in years of observation now, uh, myself and others, it doesn't generally happen. Uh, the queen will stick down and you're allowing your bees uh, an easy access to move up so they're not forced to go through those pesky screens. So anyway, um, that's it for today. Uh, you know, whatever you go with, whether you put the, the queen excluder on the, the traditional way or, you know, perpendicular or you just use a scrap piece of metal. Uh, they seem to do all the same thing without any, uh, you know, without any apparent difference between them. So uh, I think that's what I was looking to demonstrate today. But uh, one last thing uh, that I think is worth pointing out there's a whole industry and I, I see it on um, on you know YouTube and uh, Instagram and Facebook a lot of people who just talk about how expensive beekeeping is and I can tell you from experience beekeeping does not need to be expensive you do not need to go buy bees you do not need to buy all the expensive equipment you know this is about a quarter you know or free some scrap metal um, like lids, you know, things like this, you know, you can make that out of pallets, out of scrap wood, stuff you can find for free. The only thing, you know, and this is my opinion, the only thing that I really do buy on a regular basis would be my boxes. Bottom boards, uh, lids, inner covers, these can all be built very easily. Boxes can be built as well, but, uh, they need to be precise. You know, you'd need a good jig to get that set up. And just the time to cost. A box like that is just over, you know, $22, $23 in the time that you put into building it. But, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of resources out there. And uh, get yourself a table saw. And, uh, you know, it doesn't require too much skill. And you can save a heck of a lot of money. And you can build an, uh, build an apiary. Uh, anyway... That is all for now. Hope you guys have a good day. Take care.